Have you seen a chubby cat gamer stunning an entire battlefield? Well, you are in luck. I love tactical games to take my mind off things, and there is no better game than Slay the Spire or Super Auto Pets. But today, I found this amazing game called Claws and Chaos, that lets you make a complete cat army and ravage other players with different animal combinations. Let's get started with the arena, which is the player versus player mode. Let's get into it. Firstly, if you don't have units that you like, I recommend you upgrade shop first and then re-roll. Nice, I just got a slime cat. I will also increase the population and get this bear priest. Let's start the battle. You can just re-roll, but if you upgrade shop, it will increase chances by one more slot to get a desired unit. Cat Slime has the ability to create a mini cat when it dies. This is probably the best starting unit for one gold cost. Now because I went 2 vs 3, I will probably lose this battle. But the point of this run is to win the overall game, not just one battle. For now, it's still good, because we got plus 1 population and shop, so for our next turn, we should have an advantage. I'm going to sell the useless bear and get another Cat Slime. Upgrade the shop and population once more. Hmm, maybe the archer. Actually, I'll just re-roll again. And we just got the Assassin's Cat. He is really good at picking up enemy units in the back. The bunny is similar to the Assassin's Cat, and he also knocks enemies, but the Assassin's does way more damage. These two units, the further you place them, the more they will move on the battlefield at the start. Let's start the battle. Nice, they are taking out the enemy rangers. We should win this battle with ease. Our first win. Now that's not the units we want to see. Let's just upgrade the shop and population for now. Hmm. The rabbit necromancer is pretty good as he can summon skeletons and also deal decent damage. The monkey agents are also good. I will go with the rabbit for now. He's going to summon a skeleton, so let's see. I'll put him here. The position of your units is very important in this game. Let's make our assassin go for their ranger. Same for our bunny. I was thinking maybe the enemy bunny and mine can collide, but I think they will just pass each other. So I'll also make him go for the back units. I'm still experimenting and discovering new things with this game. Let's start the battle. Look at them shadow walk all the way to the back. Oh yeah, my assassins are doing a really good job. This should be another easy win. Nice, on to the next one. Hmm, I could give the gun to the necromancer, as it will increase critical, and if he crits, he can summon more skeletons, but I want a full cat army. So let's just upgrade everything and re-roll. Oh, we did get something nice. I'm thinking I should save this book for the cat slime for the next turn and get the cat witch. If you lock items, they can stay in the shop when you re-roll or into the next turn. Hmm, what about the koala? No, I think I'll just get the cat witch. The cat witch doesn't do a lot of damage, but it does in an area of effect. She is really good for late game when there are lots of units on the field. I'm thinking of the scarf since I have one more gold left, but I think I'll just re-roll. Let's also position our troops a bit better. Let's re-roll one more time before we start. Let's start the battle. He has good defense units. This is going to be a bit close. Oh nice, my necromancer just crit and summon another skeleton. But I think I would have won even without that skeleton. Let's see what we get now. Oh yes, we got the Cat Gammer. I will level up population and add him in. This is my favorite unit in the entire game. He can literally stun everything in a line at the start of the game, 
and he also does decent damage after. I will also add the book to one of my cat slime. I only have two gold left. I'll probably just spend it re-rolling. Oh, nice. We also got the loaf cat. I'll lock it for the next turn. It has low damage but incredibly high health. Look at those 70 hit points. This is the best tank. Let's also position our troops a bit better. Let's start the battle. I position the cat gammer to stun his archer. This cat is not only good because it can stun the range units but also the front units. You basically get to hit those units one more time before they even start hitting you. A huge advantage. I love the little ghosts that remain on the battlefield after units die. And for example, summon skeletons don't leave any ghosts after they die. The developers have included a lot of small details like that and more. Like you should pay attention to all the units when you lift them up to a range on the board as they have really cute animations. Easy win. Oh, this will be a fun battle. This player has arranged all the units together. This is a really bad strategy for him as now I can use the Cat Gammer to stun everyone and Cat Witch will do damage to all of his units. Now he might have arranged his units like this to counter another player. But overall, it's not good to put them all together like that. This is not a real-time battle, by the way. They take the arrangement of previous battles of other players, and you battle them. I will sell this bunny and get the loaf cat. This is still a demo game, and I hope they will improve the PvP fights more. They could, for example, take inspiration from the teamfight tactics of League of Legends. Oh nice, another cat witch to hit these piled up units. And we also have an aristocat. This is a really good defensive unit, but we don't have enough money for it this turn. I will get the grapes and give them to my cat loaf to increase his health even more. I have one more gold. I will reroll one more time before we start. Hmm, nothing we need. Let's just start. This should be the easiest fight yet, like a bunch of house cats taking on a squad of overconfident monkeys in a tactical battle. I mean, we're talking about felines who have been training for this their whole lives by stalking laser pointers and ambushing unsuspecting feet. If this gets any easier, they might just nap halfway through the skirmish and still come out on top. This fight was such a meow nificent breeze. Let's see what we get now. Oh, we have another cat player. Oops, I forgot to lock my aristocat, now I lost him. We have maximum population, so let's upgrade the shop as well. I will give the shield to my cat loaf to increase my defense even more. Let's also arrange my cats a bit more tactfully. You don't have a timer on this, so take your time and make sure you position everyone in your unit to deal with the biggest threats. For example, this player also has a cat gamer, so take the units out of his stun ability. Then put your cat gamer to stun his units. I forgot if the stun ability of the gamer triggers before or after my assassin ability. Actually, let's not risk it and place him away. Since he also has an assassin, I will put my necromancer who will summon a skeleton in the back to deal with that. Let's also upgrade my cat assassin. Hmm, actually I want to test that now. I want to see if the cat assassin ability will trigger before the cat gamer. I have three more gold. Let's give my assassin some lifesteal. And I will just reroll. Hmm, nothing. Reroll again. Nice, another cat loaf. Let's start the cat fight. Watching a real cat fight is like witnessing a very fluffy, very dramatic soap opera. Complete with over the top hissing, exaggerated paw slaps, and enough fur flying to knit a sweater. But let's be honest. Half the time they end up just staring each other down. As if they're trying to telepathically decide if it's really worth the effort, or if they should just take a nap instead. After all, a good nap solves everything. 
Instead, maybe they should settle their differences in this game. Easy fight. I should upgrade my cat loaf. Hmm, the book is also good. Maybe I'll just re-roll. I'll just lock the book, in case I do want to use it. Wait, let's upgrade the shop first. And now re-roll. We got another cat witch. Let's also arrange my cats a bit more tactfully. I will place my cat gamer so it can stun this dorky bunny. The bunny can also stun when it deals critical. And my slimes to tank his infantry. Or I'll just combine them and get the cat loaf. I should also upgrade my cat witch. I got one more gold. I'm thinking of the scarf on the necromancer. The scarf should protect from debuffs, like stun for example. And I should put my rangers in the back of my tanks. Let's start the battle. Oh, I forgot about the bunny. Oh my god, the bunny got my cat witch. No! This bunny is killing all of my back units. Are you kidding me? This bunny literally beat me because he got in the back line of my army. Oof, I really need to deal with that bunny. Let's see how we can improve my army more. Maybe the book that summons a skeleton when the user dies. Firstly, let me rearrange the units to better deal with the deranged assassin. And if I use the books, I will literally have two more units. Two more skeletons. The feather accessory would have been even better, as it will replicate the unit, but the book will do for now. Let me put the necromancer in the back. This counts as two units as well as he will summon a skeleton and even more units if he does criticals. And let's re-roll and see what else we get. Oh nice, another cat gamer. I'm also seeing the kitten unit. This unit does a huge amount of damage but it usually dies too fast to even do anything. I'm not sure if I should get it yet, so I'll just lock it and see later. Let's get the apple and increase the health of my current units. And that's it for now. Let's start the battle. Wait, maybe I should put the slime in the back to make sure we take care of the enemy assassin. Now start. Yes, that took care of the assassin. Overwhelmingly easy battle. Okay, we got three more battles to win. For now, let's try to buff our existing army. Like I can use the carrot on my tanks to regenerate life. Let's see which one has the highest health. 75 and 80, we are going to give it to the 81. Let's rearrange our units a bit. Marmoset Ranger. Stuns enemies for one second. Also, it deals area damage. This monkey is dangerous. I'm going to position my cat gamer to stun it. And I'm hoping my assassins can get to that Marmoset monkey. He has no assassins, so I don't need to protect my back units. Only focus on the front defense. I'll put my necromancer close to the front as well. 
Let's reroll and see what we get. Oh, the wizard hat is actually really good on my cat witches. I'm a bit scared of this marmoset monkey. I had a previous game where I lost the game because of it. Let's just re-roll and see what else we get. Oh, another cat slime. Let's upgrade my current one and start the game. That marmoset monkey is insane. Look at it, he just stunned two units at the same time. And now he even killed my assassin cat. Fortunately, that is the only good unit he has. I'll make quick work of this battle. Two more to go. Oh, another cat player. Hmm, firstly, let's upgrade our slime cat even more. I could also use the drumstick for more attack. Let's arrange the units for now. I'm going to leave the cat gamer in the middle so they both stun each other, but I'll move the rest of my units out of his stun ability. I'll put the cat slime in the back so it deals with his assassin. And let's just re-roll and see what else we get. Oh, nice another wizard hat. I'll give it to my other witch cat. And one more wizard hat for the cat gamer. Let's start. Hmm, I don't really understand how the stun and assassin work. Like for example, just now my cat gamer stunned the enemy assassin. But last time I tried the assassin went through my stun ability. I need to experiment more with that and find out exactly how it works. Quite a close match. We were both left with almost identical units at the end, but because I gave the wizard hat to my units, I came out on top. Really good item. Oh no, this rabbit middle schooler is the most powerful range damage unit in the game. You should know that staking the same type of units like cats or bunnies for example give certain bonuses, and bunnies have bonus to crit damage. Fortunately he only has one rabbit and that extra bonus will not be applied. This phoenix feather is really good on the tang units. Let's arrange the units a bit better for now. and give the feather to my cat loaves and slime. We got one more gold to reroll. This is the final battle, but I got two more hearts. So in case I do lose this battle, I have one more chance to improve my units. It's good to spend all the gold and reroll in preparation for the next battle. It seems I'll have no problems winning this. The best unit I have is without a doubt the Cat Gamer as it stuns the enemies giving me time to position and deal damage first. Easy and fun game. If you liked this video, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions or would like to see more of this, leave a comment. Thank you and have a wonderful day.